Hey mangoes, it's a mango and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna teach you guys about shading techniques in Clip Studio Paint. I'm gonna be going through the basics of shading as well as different techniques of shading. At the end, I'm gonna make this illustration with the shading techniques that we will be learning in the video, so stick around for that. Alright, then let's get into the teachings. To start off, I'm gonna make a circle and give it a base color. That way, it'll be easy for me to go into the lights and darks and explain it better. So the first thing we need to do when we have our object in front is to find a light source. The light source is the most important part of any shading because it tells us exactly where we have to place the shadows and highlights. Clip Studio Paint gives you different options in pen, brush and blending tools as you have a variety of options to choose from. We'll get into the techniques later and for that we'll use different pen tools. For now I'm gonna use simple pencil tool. It's always best to start off with shadows that way we can build into the darks and then lights. As you can see, I have shaded the bottom of my sphere pretty dark and then I have added a little highlight on the top to give it a more 3D effect. Shading is a lot about overlaying and building on colors. I'm also using textured blender to blend out the pencil shading and I'm blending in the white at the bottom and sphere for highlight and more definition. You can see because the light was coming from the top, the top of the ball is a lot more brighter than the bottom and it's the bottom is carrying a much darker effect. Now let's move on to the shadow of the ball that is being cast on the floor. Giving an object some shadow gives it more value. It's important to place the shadow in the exact opposite of where your light is coming from. In this case, the light is coming from the top left so the shadow forms on the bottom right. I'm building on the shadows at the bottom near the ball. That's why it's darker since it's closer to the object and it gets lighter as you move further away from the object. This is because the surrounding light reaches that part more. This way we can determine the shape of our object. So this is how you work on your objects to give it value and depth. The more we work on shades and shadows, the more we move our illustrations from 2D to 3D. Now I'm going to talk to you guys about shading techniques. There are many different drawing styles and shading techniques but I'm gonna talk about the three basics ones that I use. So I'm using the Lily illustration from the decoration tool so that I have the same basic illustration when working on different shading techniques. The first technique that I'm gonna use will be pencil shading but without blending like we did before with our ball. So this is only about working with dark and lights. For this one, we're gonna overlay our pencil over and over again on top of each other so that where we want our dark shadows to cast and we're gonna leave the parts that we want to be bright and highlighted.
The second technique I'm using is cross hatching. There's also hatching which is just parallel lines but with cross hatching I personally find it easier to work with the shadows to make it look darker. And I'm gonna be using a pen tool for this technique. In the third technique, I'm gonna use a rough wash to give the shades and use texture blender to blend them out. This is the only illustration in which I am blending out the colors. So you can see that I've used a different position for where the light comes from and this causes the shadows to appear in different places.
the three techniques that i've used are illustrated on the side and you can see how it makes your illustration look different from one another this is up to the artist which shading style they prefer in their illustrations so now that we understand the basics of shading techniques i'm gonna move on to creating an illustration and using those techniques in it so as you guys can see i already have a rough sketch I'm starting off by giving it a base color and once I'm done with that I'll give it a light source and work with the shadows from there. I personally find using rough wash brush tool much better for giving a skin texture so I'm using that and wet bleed to blend it all together. We can see the elements on the top caster shadow on the bottom. You'll see that I used a top light source and worked on building the shadows where shade is falling on the neck and face. Working on the shadows in the hair, I used a bright yellow color to make it seem like the light that was coming from the top is yellow. I also blended in white color for direct highlight effect. 
and added darker shadows at the hair near the neck to make it seem like it's in the back. This is how with shading we give perspective on how to make our illustrations come to life. And now I'm gonna quickly finish the rest and add some highlights and show you the final product. So this is the final product. As you can see, I added the eyes and made them extra big to go with the antlers and give it an all over Bambi look with the tiny nose and mouth. I also added white strands in her hair to give it more definition so it'll stand out more. I didn't do much cleaning because I still wanted to give a rough concept art look. The light coming from the top so you can see where the shadows and highlights are falling. For example, the antlers and neck and how the antlers have shadows on their bottom half and the highlights on the top half exactly where the light is hitting them directly. And the antlers are also casting a shadow on her hair. This way the whole picture comes together as one. So this is how we use shades and shadows to give our drawing more details and make them look better. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you guys and you have a better idea on how to shade in Clip Studio Paint. I also uploaded a written tutorial and the link is in the description below. If you want to see more tutorials, hit the like and subscribe and turn on the bell notification. So I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.